four. Essendon went down to Port Melbourne in the VFLW earlier on this morning. They certainly did. We are underway for both of these sides in 2024. Haitley may have been pushed in the back. They're flat on top of the new bomber, Jackson Haitley, part of the leadership group with Xavier O'Neill. Two of them joining the club over the off-season. Dump the bombers inside 50. There is a slight breeze oh. to the right of screen. In fact, maybe a bit more than slight. It held up in the air, didn't it? And Shadow Brain, the man with the best name in the competition, takes the mark. He went for Loman. Sucking the wind out of himself. There was Archie Roberts. Brisbane, the first real foray forward. It's fisted over the line by Campbell Gray. Now, Jem, we saw uh, just before we came on, the Brisbane Lions won the coin toss. They're going left of screen with a bit of an, the aid of the breeze. We spoke to Ben Hudson during the week. It's a big season for the Brisbane Lions this year. It is. They'll be looking to try to replicate the sort of success that the AFL and AFLW teams had at senior level, obviously both making the grand final and the AFLW side winning the flag. Um, so now after going out in a pre uh, prelim final in his first season as coach, he's looking to go one better. That's the second time you've mentioned it in 25 seconds, plus the, the podcast mentioned earlier on the week when we caught up with him. He promised an eyeballing of you <laughs> at some point today. So that's the Brisbane Lion coach. Ben Hudson, of course, the Bombers have got a new coach in 2024, an Essendon champion in Blake Carousel, of course, part of that premiership team back in 2000. It's completely new look Bombers outfit as well. You know all about that 2000 flag, don't you, Joey? Oh, I know a bit about it. I don't love to talk Just about it. a little it. bit. Um, yeah, there's a lot to like about the Bombers. Obviously, they didn't go as well last year as what Brisbane did, um, but they started to find a bit of a groove in some of their games and started to find the reliance on some of those VFL-listed players. So that's what they'll be looking for today, even though there's a few stars' names out there, including Sam Wiedemann and recent draftee in Nate Caddy. You know, looking forward to watching uh, the prize recruit from the Dons this afternoon and, of course, on the Brisbane side of things, Tom Duday. His first look in Brisbane colours since joining from Adelaide as uh, O'Neill, the captain, sends it inside 50 in the caddy direction. He's met by Dude, who may have just jumped into his back ever so slightly. A string of handballs from the Lions defence. It ends up with Jackson Pryor and they clear it into the waiting arms of Loman. I did speak to our good friend Michael Whiting, or Fish as we call him, during the week about Tom Dude. He's obviously an expert when it comes to Brisbane. Um, He's really looking forward to Dude coming in as that third key defensive option in the AFL side. So if he can get through today, coming back off that ACL, he's no doubt going to be almost straight into that senior side. Awkward moments for the Bombers' defence, but they work this out OK with Bailey Scott sending it down the line and Brian, the big ruckman, opposed to Darcy Fort, just taps it over the boundary line. So, of course, we're probably looking at maybe some managed minutes for Tom Dude given the fact that he is coming off an ACL. It's his first outing with a new team and a new environment after spending so many years at Adelaide. Yeah, no doubt there'll be some element of protection for him, but I think as a super competitor that he is, he'll want to get through as much as he can to prove that he's match fit and ready for that senior level. Um, the other one out there that you know could come in as that key defensive option that the AFL side hasn't opted to is the man with the ball right now is Dara Joyce, who is playing as captain today. We'll get it back here from Pryor. He runs around. His opponent sends it down the line, but it's all bombers, although on the slide. They couldn't take the mark, so it opens the door for Brisbane to send it forward again through Kyle Dunkley. And Fort, big man, couldn't take the mark. Brian wrapped him up straight away. Loman was lurking. That's a strong tackle by the man in the number 81, Campbell Gray. Just outside 50, the umpire will ask for it again. Dunkley is one that Ben Hudson spoke to us about during that podcast chat, Joey about what he can offer this year. I think it's his second season uh, in Brisbane's VFL side. Yep. Um, so he's an exciting one to watch that the coach is really excited about. So Campbell Gray takes the mark in the back pocket. He'll send it down the line. Wiedemann will fly. Didn't take the mark. Brian turned himself into a rover at the front of that contest. Sent it into the centre square. Pryor had it tapped away from Jaden Davey. Look at the speed stuff. He crosses 50 with a second bounce. He'll run to 20. He'll close to 10. That's brilliant from Jaden. Welcome back to football for this young man. Of course, the brother of Alwyn Davey Jr., who was a late withdrawal. We thought the two of them were going to light it up, but it only needs Jaden to excite the fans around the hangar. The first goal of the Bombers' season goes his way, and they're on the board in the opening couple of minutes of this game. 
As soon as he gathered that and saw an absolute paddock of space ahead of him, he knew that it was all his to take. And um, the, the composure to run, keep an eye on what was coming behind him, and actually, you know, make sure of it. Because we've also seen people spray those sorts of opportunities. So really good from Jaden there to get them off to a start. We talked a lot in the previous game, Joey, about Essendon wanting to clear out their forward line and use the space out the back. Didn't quite work out for the W side, but it started really well for the men's side. Early contender for a Smithy snag from Jaden Davey. Beautiful bounce from the umpire as we restart playing the centre square. It's one down to Brian again. Oh. Although he, his kick is intercepted by Kyle Dunkley, who's been made to work by Jackson Haitley on the ground. Tunstall gets boot to ball and sends it to centre half forward. And Luke Lloyd now, Jim, I don't know if you know much about Luke, played for De La Salle last year, finishing year 12, kicked 19 goals in a game. So he knows where to find them. Unfortunately, on that occasion, it's Gray standing tall in defence for the Bombers. Picks out Jedwood, who was a late inclusion this afternoon. Lewis Hayes, spent a lot of time over the last 12 to 24 months working on his defensive craft. Very rare for an Essendon jumper with the number 18 to be standing in the back line. But uh, that's where Louis Hayes is trying to make his name for the Bombers. A wonderful intercept mark to the man in front. Terrific stuff from James Tunstall. Just to move it quickly. Try and get it into a very stacked forward 50 arc. He goes the 1-2 into the pocket for Lohman. There is Hayes. Fisting it over the line. And I like that from Lewis. There were signs of this last year from him. Another year, another preseason into him. Hopefully gets his opportunity at AFL level at some point this year. Yeah, I'd agree. And finding organisation in defence is so key, isn't it, Joey, to being a, a successful side? We know that scoring is important, but stopping the opposition from doing that is equally as important. And Essendon have just shown they're a bit more organised in that back half, a bit, bit stronger. So the, the forwards of Brisbane are probably going to have to work a little bit harder to find space to get some genuine looks at it because Essendon's all over them right now. Yeah, early going, and they've, they've stacked the defensive 50, haven't they, Jem? The Bombers, they're pretty keen on clogging it up, although there's a free kick for a high contact towards Henry Smith. So one of their tools, he'll probably plant himself in the goal square, I dare say, for the afternoon and be their big presenting forward and then obviously ruck when there are stoppages in that forward half. Absolutely, and there is a bit of wind around. We haven't mentioned it yet, but it's steadily gotten windier as the day has worn on, so there is a bit to navigate um, ki kicking for goal here. So Henry Smith from a free kick from a stoppage to respond to the Jaden Davey goal, early going of this contest. He approaches the goal face now, puts it on its way, and it stays left and never looked like it once it left the boot. A minus score, one straight six, the Bombers. The Lions one behind early going of this game. Yeah, we should make mention of those late changes for the Bombers. Harry Jones and Alwyn Davey are both out of the side. Uh, I expect that they're travelling emergencies for the senior side who will be playing later this evening against the Swans up in Sydney. Um, Jack Jedwood and Michael Kiraly have both come in for them. The kick from Davey. That's Jaden Davey, was intercepted, and Brisbane are going back inside 50 again in the direction of Smith. A string of handballs from the Bombers' defence works out with Luau. Out of side of the ground, a free kick maybe going the way of the Dons here to Toma. New inclusion over the summer period for Essendon. And down the line, Luau kept running. And he received from Michael Kiraly, who was one of those late inclusions. So on the half-forward flank, out of side of the ground here at the hangar, just off the side of the boot. We've got some numbers. Smart was there. Haitley put on his backside was Paris. Came across from Sandringham. Well, on St Kilda's list last year. I think he might have been delisted over the summer and now trying to find his way back onto a list with the Bombers. Here he is on cue, fisting it forward. They just paddle it out into space, although the Lions' defence are right up to the task in wrapping up Jared Eckersley. He hits the deck. What we've seen from the Bombers so far is how quick they're able to transition from their defensive half, but how neatly they're able to do it as well. They're holding possession of the footy when they go down. It's not 
it's not kick and hope. It's really considered with the way that they're moving the ball. That kick inside 50 obviously didn't quite come off. They look far more dangerous when they're doing that transition than what Brisbane has so far. Now to be thrown back in in the forward pocket. They've kicked the only goal of the contest so far. This is the first round of the Smithies VFL season for 2024. Brian and Fort. Darcy pushed his opposing Ruckman aside. It fell into the waiting arms of Torrent. Down the line. Oh, big clash of bodies. They came from all parts of the compass. Callan Lane, number 45, the tallest man in the pack. Landed square on his back, but he's up now. Luau, been awarded a free kick. Not a great one as he went back into the corridor. And Will Martin, back in the Brisbane side. Last time he played for the Lions was in 2019. Kick across the ground of the great man, Shadow Brain. Looking for Smith. Bounces on its point, rolls over the line. But they've transitioned from the opposite half back flank to this side of the ground, the hangar side. And they need to do that with relative ease, Jeff. Yeah, that willingness to come back into the corridor, find the open side, to find those runners that are getting into that space. It was the right idea for the kick from Brain going inside 50, but just wasn't quite placed where his teammates needed um, to make a real go of it. The Bombers are going to clear it out, though. Mind a few little look-away handballs. Smart. It was kicked away from him by Pryor. On the left, he goes inside 50. Goes over there to Smith. Lane's in a two-on-one. Managed to keep the ball in here, the Brisbane Lions. Now towards Smith. Was pushed off it by Dunkley. And the Bombers will work it out, although it's a haphazard kick from Jared Eggersley. Down the line, Smart was outmarked by Shadow Brain, using his footy smarts to take that one. And he'll thump it back inside that stacked forward 50 arc. Callan Lane, the tallest man there, just plucked it out of the sky. It was almost an uncontested <laughs> mark in the end. Oh, he's given up a free kick in the process, that's why. There you go. So it'll be a free kick to Essendon and Will Hoare. Ugly kick off is the not, boot. Not a good one at all. Brain and Smart go at it again. Haitley, his handball was intercepted. There's a little bit of pressure out there on the disposal of both of these teams, really, Jen. Yeah, when they do get it out into the space and, and chain that possession, both sides look quite dangerous and, and very quick. The problem being they're breaking down a little bit going inside 50, both sides. So the Bombers, again, just thump it out with no real direction on that kick, but it might work out for them. Again, they're off to the races. <laughs> Davey loves to run. That's two bounces. He'll chisel it to centre half forward, and the mark's been taken. No, it's a from play on. Jakey Jedwab, they call play on. So Wiedemann is pushed off it, and Pryor, who's a left footer, he wants his favoured side. Not a great kick at all. Oscar Smart, the small forward for the Dons, he's set to light it up in 2024. And Caddy, all eyes are on him. He's ended up marking that. I think it might have been a free kick for front on contact, Joey. Ah, right. Well, he brought it to ground, didn't Nate Caddy? Yeah, that kick inside was unreal from uh, Smart. Put it to exactly the hole at the top of the goal square amidst everything that was going on. It made it perfect for Caddy. So I saw a bit of Nate play with Parade College last year. Here he is in the red and black. Welcome to the big leagues. He kicks his first. And again, Jem, it's on the back of... Jaden Davey willing to take a couple of bounces, take the ground in front of him and break through some lines. The handball to get it out to Davey to begin with was perfect. It put it just out in front of him, squeezed it out of the congestion, knowing that Davey was there. So to, to be able to execute a handball like that, it seems like such a rudimentary skill in footy. But under pressure, putting it out in front of your runner, who you know is there already, um, so they don't have to break stride. And the thing that we probably missed amongst all of that was Luau was also running in a wave. So he was also offering another option on the outside if he needed. So Essendon have got that chemistry with one another early um, that the Lions are just lacking a tiny little bit of. Two straight 12 to one behind. Smith's moved into the ruck for Brisbane. In the end, he's cast himself in the role of a rover and taken it out of the centre, thumps it to the top of the goal square. It's fisted away by Gray. The Smalls can go to work. It was nearly shoveled into the path of Madden, but the ball's been locked up. So the umpire will cross the arms and ask for it again. 
25, 30 out from the Brisbane goal. With the aid of a breeze in this opening term, Fort won it down. Gray will extract it for the Bombers. They'll go towards the safety of the boundary line with Ricky Monty. Another one of the new players that's joined the Essendon list this year. He's got a nice pair of skates on him out of Golden Square, his footy club. And uh, the Bombers have been really impressed by his pre-season. They played five practice games in the pre-season, Jim. They, five. They also went up to the NT with the W they side. They did and experienced the same sort of conditions that the girls played in. Yes, plenty of humidity and heat. So they're well prepared for what this season has to offer. Beautiful handball back oh. inboard, although that kick is not great from Vigo Vicentini. Obviously his brother famously made his debut for Port Adelaide. Plus might have been against the Bombers yeah. on the MCG in that game that... Dante? Some that massive goal after the siren. Some good European names, those. They most certainly are. Along the ground goes that handball to the top of the square. It just goes over the head of Lane. And Tom Toma can reel it in. He sweeps the handball to his captain in Xavier O'Neill, who broke the tackle. And then uh, Yus Kiraly, who's got some speed on him. Unfortunately, though, it's might come straight back because it's in the hands of Tom Duday. Thumps it inside 50. Morris couldn't take the mark. He'll have a second go along with Fort, who was brought to ground. And the umpire will ask for the ball. Bombers are keeping their structure behind the ball really solid. So they're not being caught out with that space out the back because they're just keeping that organisation. I keep saying organisation, but it's so important in terms of that defensive positioning. Um, and it's making it really hard for those Brisbane forwards to get any sort of look at the footy. Importantly, they're forcing Brisbane to win a contested mark in order to get a set shot on goal. Well, here's a chance for Lohman, who breaks through a couple of tackles. He sweeps the handball out wide. He might get it back, although it's not a great handball. Had to go to work. Kiralee was down there trying to help out his Bombers defence. Gray had a bit of it in this first quarter already. And he picks out Vicentini. So despite the uh, surge mentality of the Lions forwards, right now... The Bombers' defence is standing tall. And Caddy's earned himself a free kick. On the outer wing, Wiedemann. he will fly. Couldn't take the mark as the ball hits the ground. Duday cuts back inboard. That kick was partially smothered. It was off the boot of McPherson. And we're wrapped up on the outer wing. Lohman has Xavier O'Neill in a tackle. Joey, if you're Essendon, an mm -hmm. Essendon fan which I know is blasphemy for you, but mm -hmm. if you're an Essendon fan and you're seeing how well this defence is setting up, knowing the issues that they're having in terms of personnel in defence at the senior level, mm -hmm. are you encouraged by what's coming through underneath? Um, in the first 10 or so minutes of this game, I'd have to say yes. Yes. But at the same time, I did mention they've had the five practice games and particularly the last three, Geelong, Sandringham and Box Hill were able to get Strings of goals and momentum and upwards of 90 points in each of those games. So there are question marks, I guess, over the defence of the Bombers even this summer. And there has been a stack of change since the lineup of last year, which still struggled to kick winning scores. And here's a shot at goal and the answering one from Logan Morris. His first year on the Brisbane Lions lineup out of Werribee Districts. And he's got his name on the score sheet to start this contest. And there were just too many holes at different points last year, particularly the back half of the season. Once they sort of knew that their, their year was gone, they, they coughed up a lot of goals and a lot of games that they were in because they're just the momentum of opposition got over the top of them. So it's about slowing opposition momentum and being able to win that back, which is one of the toughest things to do in footy, no? Yeah, I think it's almost the most toughest thing to do at the mo in the modern game, regardless of men's or women's. If you're the bottom team, if you're the top team, it is really tough to stop an opposition side getting a run on. And Brisbane at senior level has been vulnerable. In the first fortnight of this year, yeah, absolutely. 
Um, we should mention Logan Morris, who just kicked that goal to get Brisbane off the mark. He was pick 31 in the draft last year. Um, who is really fighting to for a spot in the senior team, so that won't do him too much harm. No, that'll help. Most definitely. Locked up. Just inside the centre square. They've answered the two bomber goals with one of their very own. Neither Ruckman managed to get a hand to that one. O'Neill was thrown into the ground by Jake Lohman. The two brothers out there at the moment. A few brothers in this Brisbane lineup, is there not, Jen? There are. We've got Joel Buterick, who is Connor's brother, who obviously plays at Gold Coast. And Ben Hudson told us that he's had some awkward moments with Fags, where he's living with an opposition uh, player and how much he's allowed to tell him. Yes. Um, Kyle Dunkley, who we mentioned earlier, is obviously Josh's brother. And then Ewan McPherson, who is Darcy's brother, who, same issue, having his brother playing at and living with him and playing at Gold Coast. Um, how much are they allowed to talk about at home is the issue. Well, they don't speak at all. They shouldn't. Not allowed to speak at all? No. I wouldn't talk to my brother if I had one. (laughs) About anything. Jake Lohman's got the free kick. He'll go inside 50 and it's been intercepted by the Bombers. They're quick to give it to their captain in Xavier O'Neill. They'll get it back from where it came with Ricky Monty on the halfback flank. To now Michael Kiraly, 15 metres further afield. And they'll just try to chip their way through this Brisbane press. Eckersley wants this. He's led three or four times to each of the ball carriers. So Tom Toma will go to half forward. Big pack of players. At the front of it is Paris. It was reeled in by the Lions. Reveal off to Tunstall. And they might try slingshot the footy while they've got an open forward 50. Logan Morris has got the ball, kicked the last goal. Goes to a two-on-one, easy pickings for Luau. The Bombers are doing a really good job of sliding those wingers and half forwards into defence every time the ball is lost. They're making a really quick decision to defend, which is allowing them to do this sort of slingshot. These are all the players that have pushed into defence to chop off the Brisbane ball and now turn that into attack. Yeah, so they've gone outside and now cut back inboard. The captain O'Neill wasn't a great kick. It rolled past Jedwab. He's got to go back in after it. He's got the support of his teammates. If he needs, Archie Roberts kept following the footy down. Now there's been a throw. So that play gets halted. Joey, just uh, while we've got a little bit of a break here, we've got three players who have had six disposals. James Tunstill, who was the interceptor there, Jackson Haightley and Campbell Gray have each had six touches for the game so far, while Ewan McPherson has had four tackles. Logan Morris has kicked the goal, and now he's, I think, another disposal to his name. James Madden. Chips the ball to the opposite side of the centre circles. Jack Manley. It's a shadow brain who'll use the left foot to go inside 50. Nick Bryan came out as if he was the forward but didn't take the mark. Lomans threw the handball backwards. Off to Pryor on the right foot. It's going across the face of goal. It's off hands. And fisted through for a minus score. Joey, just an update on the other games happening today. Yes, please. We've just had a VFLW match finish up between Geelong and Carlton. Geelong ended up 4-4-28 going down to Carlton's 9-5-59, which is pretty impressive from Carlton, who struggled at times last year. Mm -hmm. Um, The Western Bulldogs in North Melbourne are still playing off its three-quarter time. Western Bulldogs are on 34 points, North Melbourne on 59. So there you go. Your prediction that North Melbourne's going to zoom up the ladder is uh, alive and well, Joey. Mm Mm-hmm. And let's get to the VFL men's as well. There's lots of footy happening right now. The Gold Coast Suns are down by 24 against Richmond, 24 to 47. The Southport is leading the Borough by 13 points, 27 to 14. There you go. That's everything that's happening. And you can watch all those games on afl.com.au or the AFL Live official app. The free kick's been found the way of Kyle Dunkley. He'll thump it inside. 50 massive fly from Gray went up before acceptances. And in the end, he's given away a free kick for 
Well, an unrealistic attempt. Did you see uh, Tom Stewart's fly last he night? He had a real crack at it, and he could well have held it. Should have held it. Do you like the comparisons to Gary Moorcroft? Uh, some of them. Some of them? Some of them. Still frosty that Chris Tarrant may have taken mark of the year in that year. And <laughs> Gary stood on Brad Johnson to claim it. You're getting some looks from those around us yeah, up here as might well. Might be a few Essendon you? fans around me. <laughs> might have to run a poll with the Collingham fans. Here's Luke Lloyd. I told you he kicked a bag of 18 or 19 last year for De La Salle. That put his name in lights. Because he does things like that, Jim. Is that why he wears the number 19, Joey? Maybe he likes Jason Dunstall. I'm not sure. Number 19 is the best number to wear. Is it? I think so. Okay. Well, he's put him in front with that kick. 2-2-14. Two, two, the Bombers are two straight 12. 19, the best number to wear, you reckon? Yeah, I think it is. As a forward? Just in general. Oh, okay. What We're getting an insight into your favourite number then. What number do you wear, Joey? Uh, when I played, it was 13. It was mine. Yeah. 13. Um, then I moved into 29. Very strange shift. Yes. <laughs> no real reason for it. No reason. Nah, always number 9 or 19. Interesting. The, the Lions seem to have settled really nicely into this game. A few shaky moments early, allowing a lot of space out the back. But now they've kind of been able to keep that defensive pressure up higher up the ground, create turnovers higher up. So they're not exposing their defence as much. So their defence can get a little bit more attacking, um, which is really helping them. So if they can keep that up, Essendon will find it really hard to find that attack. Well, they're going inside 50 again. Lohman's out the back. It was an uncomfortable bounce for him. It's almost in the goal square. It's walloped into the back of the net by Morris. But it was a minor score in doing so. Quite a nice crowd around here as well, under a few umbrellas, Joey. It's a good, good day to be out of the hangar. It's a beautiful day. And, of course, well, the Bombers are interstate this weekend They're playing in against Sydney. your Swans. That kick is no good from Luau coming back into play. It's been intercepted by the man who has accumulated early in this game in James Tunstall. He started well, hasn't he, Tunstall? His aggressive attack on the footy can really catch out players who are being a little bit lackadaisical. Um, and he's created a couple of turnovers, obviously this one in the forward half now. And if he can go back and kick this, he'll be well placed. So James Tunstall in the number 29. It's a fantastic number. Oh. It's a, not a great kick. There's two that they've hung out to the left up there. Mm, that one didn't even register a score. He'd be pretty disappointed in that shot at goal. Just hooked it, didn't he? Mm. But he started the game well. Has James Tunstall for Brisbane. So Archie Roberts to the halfback flank. It's a stacked area at the moment. Hately, his handball just went to space. Pryor, in the end, picked out Archie Roberts. And now to Luau. Chipping ball is a good one for Jared Eckersley, who, of course, was part of the Gold Coast Premiership team last year. Yeah. Decided to make the move down to Melbourne. Turned 20 yesterday. Only 20. Only 20. Happy birthday to Jared. Maybe he can have a late birthday present. We're talking about early birthday presents in the W game a bit earlier Jesse on. Jesse Williams, yeah. Kicked a couple of nice goals. Yeah, just catching up with the result earlier on. Port Melbourne, nine goals straight. 54 beat the Bombers. Seven behinds in the first game of this double header here at the Hangar. A 28 minute opening quarter sees the Brisbane Lions hold a three point lead at it's over at Fremantle now, which means that um, there is a bit of space in that forward line that Caddy's gone into um, at this level. Um, but I would like to see a bit more from Sam Weedham and a bit more attack at the footy in the air. We well, might get the chance in this term. Darcy Fort just grabbed it out of the ruck. There's been a whistle. It's going the way of uh, the goal kicker, Luke Lloyd. Far out to score. Checked himself. Gave it to Tunstall, who closes to 40. Thumps it into goal. It's just going to hold up ever so slightly right on the line and fisted through by Campbell Gray. And the first blemish of the second term goes the way of the Lions. They extend to a four-point lead. And you can see that James Tunstall, he's quite a danger man for these uh, Brisbane Lions, Jim. He is. Jack Paris is just 
walking off a little bit of a stinger that he copped. He's trying to get a rotation here, but the ball's coming his way. But um, Tunstall looks dangerous. He just, the ball is holding up at this end of the ground, so they need to be aware of that Brisbane with these kicks towards goal. Logan Morris takes the mark from the Reese Torrent kick. Again, stacked forward 50 to the top of the square. Tall blokes in there. Smith, Lane and Fort. Bombers defence stands up. Jed oh. Webb on the left foot. Managed did Archie Roberts at least mark it and stop from going out of bounds on the full before he ran out of real estate and found himself over the boundary line. Got a bit lucky there, I would say, based on our angle, Joey. Based on our angle, yes. Which is directly had, in line with that boundary. Might have had the same angle on Thursday night. <laughs> Jack Higgins was in the MCC car park. Said by a true Collingwood fan. I didn't say that. I was just telling you where I was and <laughs> saw it as I saw it. Here's the Brisbane Lions again with Morris. And there is uh, the mark being taken by Will Hall on his defensive goal square. So he goes straight up the guts. I like that sort of stuff. It went over the back of Smart's head. Davies lurking. He's a danger man, but he's not going to get hold of this one at the moment prior to reveal. Inside the goal square, we'll go with a kick. It'll hold up, and Morris has read it beautifully. Taking it on the chest. Two and a half metres out from goal. I think Will Hall was just slipping over to as Morris just read that flight ever better. But that's what I mean when I say the Lions have to be aware that the ball is going to hold up. So it's not just about the kicker knowing that they maybe can't make the distance they typically would. It's about the forwards actually getting to those spots that if it does hold up, they're there to take the mark or stop the footy. The first one for the Brisbane Lions in the first term. And he kicks the first of the second term to have two on the board early going in this contest. They move to 3 4 22. The Bombers, 2 straight 12. A bit like the game earlier. I know I keep referencing it, Joey, but first quarter, not necessarily getting as much reward on the scoreboard. The wind isn't working to their advantage as much as they want, but then start to settle into the game and be really dangerous. That's what we're seeing from Brisbane. Whereas Essendon started to get a little bit sloppy, turning the ball over. So just. L- you know, cleaning that up, uh, making use of the space they're able to find and then composure under pressure when they don't have that space. You mentioned Jack Perris before. He's off the ground. He's got the boot off, the left boot, that is, sock off, and maybe going to get some attention with some ice or maybe some strapping. We'll see and keep you across that as uh, the afternoon unfolds. Right now he's sitting on the bench getting some attention from the medicos. Jackson Pryor turned himself back into trouble and then decided to give the handball to Dunkley, but Davey... Real strong in the tackle. May have thought he would, should have been rewarded in the end. The umpire let the play go, and it's been locked up just outside the uh, forward 50 arc for the Bombers. So Brian won it down. Dunkley tried to break through another tackle. Again, they're going to ask the question. The umpire's going to cross the arms and have it again. Xavier O'Neill, the captain, picks himself up. Reveal breaks away from the contest and kicks it up and down the chimney. Sitting underneath the high ball, there was Solomon McKay. It went back to Reveal. It broke away from O'Neill. Out of side of the ground, they chisel it into half forward. And Torrent takes the mark. Gray missed it. Lane did the roving to the top of the square. He goes with a kick. Loman, oh. one juke, nearly reeled it in. Morris is at the fall of the ball. Back to Loman, who wants his right foot. He snaps onto it now. It's starting to work back on the breeze towards the boundary line. It's off hands. Fist it into the crowd. It was well done by Foley in that defensive role. He was stuck in an awkward position up against Loman, forced Loman to hand it off to begin with. And then when Loman got it back, he was able to just pressure him enough that he wasn't able to get the clean kickoff. So credit to Foley there for... An awkward, awkward position for a defender to be in. Brilliant tap down from Lane. Tunstall went to Loam and smashed into McKay. Hit the deck. And uh, we're going to have a secondary stoppage around about 20 out. Joe, the inside 50 count is dire for Essendon. They've won six and Brisbane has had 25. But if you're Brisbane, you're probably hoping to get a little bit more reward for that effort as Loman looks saw and is just limping to the boundary line. I think he might have got a rock-solid corky in that quad 
as he smashed into McKay. It goes over the line. So tell us about Kai Loman, Jim. What can you see just beneath us? He's grabbing at his left quad, and he's just resigned himself to the fact that he can't can barely walk right now, um, which is not ideal. He was the oh, it's his right knee, maybe. He's po- just pointed at with the trainers. Um, it was this sub for the AFL side last week. Obviously, they didn't quite get the win, but he's one who's on the fringes and needs to make every opportunity count, so he'll be frustrated that he's sore and coming off. We don't know what the extent of that is just yet. And I can see Jack Paris just getting some strapping done to the left ankle, so I imagine they're going to give it a crack and get him back on the ground as Lewis Hayes takes it at and a half back, goes towards Campbell Gray, just skidded past him, and now he's in a spot of bother with uh, Henry Smith. Ball still on the deck. It's a little uncomfortable for all comers. Reville was clean. He went backwards. And the dump kick ends up with the Bombers Ruckman and Nick Bryan, who's been told by Archie Roberts, just take a breath, son. Slow down. Let's possess this footy. It has been played in the Brisbane half of the ground this opening quarter in a little bit. This first game of the season, Jack Payne. He... Uh, Gives the ball off, and now Dara Joyce ends up with it. The mark has been taken by Harry Sharp. Brian did have some options to go back into the corridor there, but obviously didn't want to take that risky option. I know if you want to play a bit more possession and, and gain a bit more control in the game, you do want to take the surer option, but when you do have the option to pull the trigger, you've got to take it, right, Joey? Absolutely, you should. Dara Joyce has got the footy back from Will Martin. He chisels it. To half forward through the hands of Lloyd. Brian. It's good from Brian. On the ground. Off to Jed Webb. He's handball though. Smothered by Tunstall. Has another crack at it. McKay didn't panic. Hayes now. Towards Archie Roberts. Duday going back with a flight. That'll give him some confidence. Tom Duday. Top Brisbane fans want to see. It's a little ball for Harry Sharp. Works okay. Pass for the handball, Dude, He might get it back here because Sharp ran himself into trouble. And Tom will thump it inside, 50 to a big pack of players. Brian again doing the roving. He stayed down. And in the end, Smart, did he reel it in? He had three cracks at it. Couldn't quite stick the mitts. Roberts, Dude, they're locked up in the contest with Smart. And the umpire will ask for the ball. Dude does look so composed, doesn't he? And that's what that's what's let him be a star at AFL level, but... When everyone else is panicking, he's the one who seems to have all the time in the world as Paris does some run-throughs on the boundary, still pointing at that ankle in some a bit of pain. And just as you're talking, Jim, I've got the binoculars on Kai Loman and they're doing the uh, lax test for the knee and the ACL. So yeah, I don't hopefully like that. it's uh, nothing more than just testing it to see the stability of it. He is walking around the boundary line. Doesn't look too happy, does he? No. I imagine he, he got smashed into pretty hard in that contest with Solomon McKay. So keep an eye on that. The ball about to be thrown back in in the area that Kai Lohman currently undergoing a bit of fitness testing on the boundary line. Fort just goes off the ground. It bounced up perfectly for Jake Lohman to reveal. Dunkley, in fact, it was sharp kicking into the back of Xavier O'Neill and Jackson Haitley, and the ball's been locked up because of it. Joey, ask anyone who's had those tests on their knee done. You ask me if you like. I've had three of them. Same. Um, they're horrible. They Beautiful. are horrible tests. It's a sinking feeling when you feel how much movement there is in the leg. And it shouldn't be there. Yeah. A beautiful double grab. And the mark's been taken here by Sam Wiedemann. Which is what we asked for. Mm-hmm. Attack at the footy. Have a presence. Uh, be the the leading guy in that forward line because by all rights, he should be absolutely dominant in that forward line. Um, now's his chance to really put his stamp on the game. He started the season in 2023 as a forward, but the AFL and the VFL, they tried him in the back line at the end of last season. He's back in his natural habitat to start 2024 and his kick is missing to the right. Just came straight off the side of the boot, didn't it? Certainly did. Not a great hit from Sammy. Bombers' first blemish of the afternoon. 2 4 16 to 2 1 13. It's frustrating with Wiedemann because we know what he's capable of, don't we? We've seen you know, how well he played at Melbourne a lot. Um, he's had some very good games for Essendon, but he seems to really struggle to string that together in 
constant games and to really take charge of games on a consistent basis, which is what you need a big key forward to do. A wonderful, well-weighted kick from Liam Hugh to Brucey Reveal to the top of the square he goes. Lloyd's in a one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> Brilliant from the young man. He just read it better in the air on Solomon McKay. Had him on the outside of his left shoulder. Stuck the mitts out and it just stuck into his hands perfectly. Is that how he kicked 19 in a game, Joe? That's exactly how he did that. And people of De La Salle were absolutely wrapped. In fact, so much so that the old boys, the De La Salle Amos, were not allowed to play him. They wanted to put him in cotton wool so he didn't go and break <laughs> a leg or something. And here he is getting his opportunity with the Brisbane Lions. He kicked a goal in the first quarter. And he follows Logan Morris. No, he doesn't. He misses. Maybe just overthought it, Jim. Just went, it, the way he dropped the footy, it just felt like it was going left, didn't it? But it's good that he's got the confidence to go up in the air the way that he did there. And you're right, he's been reading the ball very, very well. So the Bombers will bring the footy back in. To the broadcast side of the ground, that's a wonderful mark taken by Shadow Brain. That's the backtrack. To Dara Joyce, who showed a bit of the Sharon to Vicentini. A little bit cheeky from Dara. Cool to go back over his mark now. Brings it back inboard ever so slightly. Loman still chatting with the doctors, still grabbing at the knee, trying to do little run throughs. Just doesn't look happy though. Buderick's kick's been intercepted by Brian. Goes to the far side of the ground. And that's a wonderful, well-weighted kick for Sam Wiedemann to present. On the outer side. Nice crowd is built up around the hangar. Wiedemann's kick. Not his best effort. Jackson Pryor stands tall, takes the intercept mark. And Brucey Reville, geez, he's running the angles and getting the Sharon at will. He'll get it back here from Lane. Oh. That's a little bit of candy sold too. He picks out Jake Lohman, who can swing the handball to Kyle Dunkley. Crosses 50, shoots into goal. This is almost perfect from the Lions. I think it's got there. Right side of the stick for Dunkley and the Lions. Brilliant finish. End-to-end -end stuff from the, uh, the Brisbane Lions. And makes them pay on the scoreboard, Jim. That's their fourth. Bruce Reville deserves all the credit for that. The way he came out of that back half, used his speed, sold the candy, got it off to a running teammate as well to just keep the ball moving. And when you're able to keep the ball moving like that, it really unsettles the defence, doesn't it? So it makes it so much uh, more powerful when you do go inside 50. Ability for Dunkley to clean, cleanly kick it and actually get it through the big sticks was obviously huge, but Bruce Reville deserves a lot of credit for that goal. They're about to go back into the centre square. He's up to 12 disposals along with Jackson Pryor and James Tunstall. So 36 disposals combined out of your midfield inside the first half. He's a good little return. And he's one that um, Ben Hudson, I know we keep referring back to that chat, but he's another one that Ben Hudson is one really proud of the way he's performed, but also the fact that it's done enough to get him into the AFL list as well, Bruce Reville. So He's a really feel-good story of the VFL and the, the competition as a whole, but also at what Brisbane's developing at this level. So back into the centre square, Tunstall. His Ooh. handball put his teammate under a world of trouble, and that was Shadow Brain. was thrown into the ground by Jack Paris. Great to see him back on the ground, getting some attention to that angle. Reville had a fresh airy. Luau, tackled by Lohman, managed to get the handball away, did he? Or was it incorrect disposal? It was a dangerous tackle. Ah, oh, right. Okay. So he's going to get another chance at it. He's Luau. Lohman can't quite believe it. Meanwhile, the other Lohman is still just kind of wandering around with the docks. He's away from the rest of his teammates that are on the bench right now. Would you be inclined to risk him or do you just say, That's, let's pull the pin on today and see where we can go from here? Depends on which coach you are, right? Fair point. If you're Chris Fagan, you say, keep him off. But if you embed Hudson and this, the, the outcome of this game is all important, then you've got a bit of a different mindset, right? Valid point you're making, Gemma Bastiani. 
Yeah, the sort of insights you'll get on the State of Play podcast on a Tuesday morning at 7.30. That kick went out of bounds on the full. So it's going to be the Brisbane Lions through Joel Butterick. Don't look at me like that, Jim. I know you're subscribed on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and Stitcher and TikTok and Google Podcasts and wherever else you listen to podcasts. Down the line goes the kick. Lohman couldn't take that mark. But he's bring with water with a free kick. And he'll send Brisbane inside 50 again. Oh, that's not a great kick at all. It's still wobbled inside 50. The big man had a go. Did lane. Gray oh. went in for a second attempt. It was thrown into the turf by Jack Manley. And the umpire will ask for the ball. I would be shocked, Joey, if Lohman came back out on the field. Yeah, I reckon Fags has been on the phone and said no. Precautionary. It's too early in the season. And here go the Dons. Tom Tomer getting the clearance. Oh, Mark not paid. So smart. He's got an open goal square if he can get it to Caddy. Can Nate turn around and kick his second? He runs into goal and he does just that. Didn't panic when it just got a little bit fumbly below the knees, did Nate Caddy. Nice little bit of class. And the Bombers have got their third. Nate has got his second. And Shadow Brain has hurt himself in the process of dropping that mark being attended to by trainers in the middle of the field. Did he just get the wind knocked out of him, maybe? By the looks of it, that's what it is, because he's just trying to walk it off now, but he didn't look good. But well done to Caddy. There you go. Kai Lohman's come out on the field. Maybe Fakes can get hold of call, Ben Hudson. Call me shocked. <laughs> um, but the fact that Caddy, Caddy was able to have the composure to actually convert when there was a bit of chaos happening in that passage of play and get Essendon back... Um, but get a goal back for them. Um, it's a good showing by him. He's, he's clearly got a smart footy head and the composure to really execute under pressure. 4 5 29, the Brisbane Lions. 3 1 19, the Bombers. Nate Caddy's got two goals in this first half. O'Neill tried to go backwards towards Tom Toma. Brilliant name, isn't it? Tom Toma. Have another crack at tackling and throwing his body in. Reese Torrent was wrapped up. So we'll have another stoppage inside the centre square. A lot of numbers around this ball as it's thrown back up. Vicentini won it down. Again, it's Brucey Reville getting the clearance for the Lions. He thumps it in the fort direction. Ball hits the ground so they can all go to work. Keeping it in was Hall. He handballed it towards the safety of the boundary line. It bounced back towards Gray. So Fortune's favoured the Bombers here and Ricky Monty. Down the line towards Smart, who's been busy, long way from home. Monty followed up his work. He had support from Smart. Here is Ricky Monty, a third go. He might get it again. Davies nearly been smashed into by Pryor. He managed to get through that one. They broke the tackle. They've kept this going here nicely, the Bombers. And they've worked it inside 50. Have they got another one from Caddy? He turns around, didn't even look at the goals, just thumped it. And it went through for a minor score. The length of the ground, Jem, just by handballing and willing it forward. Gee, we just talked about Caddy's composure and, you know, able to execute under pressure. He had the adrenaline so was pumping. much time there and just <laughs> sprayed it. So when, maybe he does need pressure to execute. Maybe. We'll see as the afternoon unfolds. Ball's locked up. Umpire's having a real good think about it. They might get another chance here, the Bombers. Dragged it back in. Did Sharp, which has allowed Bailey Scott to earn himself a free kick. And he'll set it up in the direction of Caddy, who was just pushed aside as it rolled over the back of that pack and through for a minor score. He got up high there, though, Caddy. He's, uh, if I was an Essendon fan, I'd be very, very excited about what he's going to bring. Well, he nearly blew up Twitter or X in January when he took one of those hangers here at the hangar on one of his teammates in an intra club. You want one of them today, don't you? What, a hanger at the hangar? Yeah. I wouldn't mind one. From Caddy in particular? Didn't have it on my bingo card, but bingo. I might put it in now. Bingo. Yes, you played bingo, Jim? <laughs> I'm not 60, Joey. Fair enough, but the Bombers are inside 50 with Nick Bryan off a 60-metre kick from Solomon McKay. Nick Bryan has been very, very good offering that defensive support. He's been really clean below the knees and now getting forward and having an impact. So athletic rucks, we love. And I like the composure that they've shown in the last few minutes. The Bombers, they've been able to hit the scoreboard and 
cut that run of four straight goals to the Brisbane Lions through Caddy's second one. And now Nick Bryant has a chance to bring the margin inside a goal from right on 50. It's on the breeze going all the way. He got the journey, no problem. The accuracy, though, taken with the wind and across the face of goal. Out of bounds on the full. Joey, can I give you some updates for some other games that are happening as we speak? Yes, please. If you don't want to know the score, look away now. But here's Gemma Bastiani with all the latest around the grounds. Richmond is leading Gold Coast by 35 points, 66 to 31 over at People's First Stadium. Uh, Southport is leading the Borough Port Melbourne by 27 points, 47 to 20. And North Melbourne has beaten the Western Bulldogs in the VFLW by 22 points, 10-5-65 against the Western Bulldogs, 6-7-43. Renee Salaitis, Emily Paterno and Talia Meyer each kicked two goals in that game in an impressive, impressive one. Good stuff there from all comers as Nate Caddy smashed into Joel Buderig to see the intensity and ferocity at the footy from the young man. He's making his way in the game. And great to hear that North Melbourne have had a win to start off their season. It's exactly what they would have wanted after someone put a line through them in 2023 and was so accurate in his calling of doing so. On the ground is Kiralee. Been wrapped up. Brisbane are asking the question. The umpire's having a think. And then crossing the arms and saying, no, just give me back the ball, boys. So nearing half time, the Lions holding a slight advantage on the scoreboard. Oh. May have been a high tackle for Sharp. Yes. Everyone had stopped. So he'll get the free kick. Will Sharp. 45 out from his defensive goal. Goes in short for Torrent. You imagine he just wants to play the percentages. Chipping ball backwards to Sharp. And we'll send it down the line. Fort, oh, biggest moment. man in the pack. Took it. We talked a lot about Luke Lloyd already, but the way he's just always on the move, trying to unsettle his defensive opponent, but also constantly be an option for his teammates. He's always moving. I've not seen him stop flat-footed once. So that mark from Lane was uh, an incorrect one by shoving aside Will Hall to Roberts. And so the Bombers will consider a switch here. McKay downfield. So in the end, Campbell Gray lucky. Going to get that free kick. To Kiralee in the centre circles. All this action. And Tom Toma. We go to the outer side of the ground. McKay kept running. That's a well weighted kick. I thought that might have been a mark paid to Haitley. The umpire thought otherwise. And so Brisbane on the overlap. Sharp just kicked it to space. It's a foot race in two out there with Gray. Cool. And the ball ends up trickling over the boundary line. Oh, it's, it's been called insufficient intent. Right, against Morris. Yes. Stiff those ones sometimes, but to the letter of the law, it's there. At least in W, it's black and white. Yep. Whereas in the men's game, it's... Open to interpretation. Correct. You there have you to go. read the mind of the person who's disposed of it. And here's Lewis Hayes having a bounce out of his defensive 50. Not in the end, he's picked out Darcy Fort. Would have been a beautiful kick if Darcy was wearing an Eston jumper. You do know it's late in a quarter when Darcy Ford is taking defensive marks. Reese Torrent now. Or just getting a fingertip to that one it was Bailey Scott. Lane. It's a terrific mark. Taken from Will Hoare just beneath us. Closing in on half time. Not a lot of movement, is there? No, they look exhausted. Um, and that sort of kick summed it up, really. Yeah. Intercepted. A lot of hands on knees already. By James Tunstall. That's the first game of the season for both of these teams. And Tunstall thumps it inside 50. Morris, massive pack of players. At the front is Lloyd, who's always on the move, according to Jim Bastiani. <laughs> to the top of the goal square goes the kick. Oh. oh, Morris may have just ripped off the head of his opponent. And it's a free kick going the way of Ricky Monty. 
your man. Your man with a cracking name, Ricky Monty. He's got a good 20 centimetres on him, so can be hard to not take them high. No, well, I, I know all about it. <laughs> they see the small boys coming. Tunstall flew over the top, dropped the mark. Here's a chance for Scott. He broke through a tackle, got it off to Vicentini. Now the speedsters can go to work. Davey to Roberts. Will Davey try to get it back? No, Roberts decides to sink the slipper into it and go to the top of the square. Couple of boys lurking. It falls to ground and Joyce can reel it in for Brisbane. Although he professionally just massaged it over the line for a behind. Gee, that would have been good if he'd been able to just put another couple of metres on that kick, get it out behind because both Bombers forwards were close to goal. Instead, they had to do the lead back up to the footy. Well, here's a chance for them to hurt him on the rebound. End-to-end -end stuff. Lane, the big man, decides, no, I'll go back over the mark. But it was uh, nicely well weighted from four to again. Bruce, you reveal the centre-half back who was composed with the footy and wanted to keep it inside the corridor. Yeah, the speed and the willingness to take it on. And, and you know, sometimes you do that, you get caught holding the ball, and that's just how footy is. But he's been able to execute that run that, you know, just keep the ball moving. It doesn't allow defences to get comfortable. So on the halftime siren, Callan Lane approaches the goal face. Never looked like it. In fact, doesn't even make the distance. Which is intriguing in itself, Jim. Shocking kick. But that is halftime of the first game. Of to attack. Um, unsettle the Bombers' defence and, and really get the ball moving quickly. Over. I've been really impressed with the way that he's gone about it today. About to get the second half underway from an injury perspective. We had Jack Paris off getting some attention to the left ankle. Came back on in the second term. And Kai Lohman to his right knee also came back on. As Xavier O'Neill, the captain of the Bombers, gets the first clearance into the chest of Oscar Smart, who'll go into the pocket... And he'll try and pick out that man, Jaden Davey, who's already kicked a cracker already in the pocket. He wheels on the left foot. That's a no good. I was about to say that's a gem, but uh, I didn't realise he was slapping his quad in frustration. I thought he was fist pumping to celebrate. No good from Jaden Davey. Gee, that was a gimme to start the season, wasn't it? Ooh. Start the uh, half, I should say. From a young man with talent like his, absolutely it was a gimme. <laughs> Absolutely. But still takes a bit of effort, Jem, and unfortunately, kicked it out of bounds on the full. The Bombers would have loved that to start them in this third term. It brings up the question of speed in Brisbane's defence. I know that at AFL level, there's been some questions over speed, especially with Kadeen Coleman injured now with that ACL. At this level as well, they don't have any really quick players in that back half, and Davey has exposed that a couple of times as well. So is that something you think... Brisbane probably needs to start looking at bringing into the side? Mm, it's an interesting question. They've certainly got speed at the front half, don't they? With Absolutely. some of their guys who Charlie Cameron immediately springs to mind. But I think you're right. That's going to be a struggle for them if they haven't got or nominated someone. Advantage is taken from Lloyd, who kicks his second goal himself. I think all players have just stopped then to try and work out what the whistle was four, and Luke Lloyd just wandered into goal and kicked his second, Jim. He was the only one that read the, who the free <laughs> kick was for to begin with. It's a bit of chaos happening there, but again, he's looked really good at this level already. Um, just looks like a really natural footballer, takes it on, um, and the execution in front of goal, obviously, he's, he's missed that set shot earlier, but just seems to have that goal now that you really like, and you're talking about some of the best forwards that Brisbane has in Charlie Cameron, but um, Luke uh, Lloyd seems to be a, a, someone that they can develop into a really dangerous target. Yeah, no question about that. He's got a bit of size about him at uh, 193 centimetres. A young 18-year-old, of course, they'll all tell us he's going to grow into his body still. But uh, He's going to be learning off the likes of Joe Danaher, Eric Hipwood, Charlie we've already mentioned a couple of times. Lincoln McCarthy's in that forward line as well. I mean, he's got some really good mentors in the Brisbane forward line that I'm going to teach him about his forward craft. And already we've mentioned a couple of times what he did last year playing schoolboy footy with D. Larsell. He certainly, at the early stages of his career, has not looked overawed. No, not at all. And we've uh, pointed out how he reads the footy in flight. Mm. 
even navigating that wind last quarter, he seems to know where the ball's going to drop, gets himself into a good position, and is able to exploit any vulnerabilities in defences um, that aren't quite as good at reading the footy as he is. So that's that can only bode well for the future. So this kick thumped inside 50. He's lurking around this contest. Is Lloydy, as is Smith. He managed to get a boot to it. In the end, Tunstall, fortuitous, was just enough 10, 12 metres off that contest to be able to read that fly the air. And Big Smithy, they couldn't bring him down. Tunstall, again, has been in absolutely everything and he just works incredibly hard. We love those players that get back to helping the defence. We talked about Nick Bryan doing that before, but then also get really aggressive in the attack when the ball is won. So he's had a good outing in the first half so far, has James Tunstall. He's got the chance to add his name to the score sheet here. Works it back perfectly on the breeze, and the Brisbane Lions have got two to start the second half. Big game from Tunstall so far. He's um, in the middle, getting forward, getting some intercepts in the back half. He's, he's doing it all, Joey. He certainly is. 6 5 41, the Brisbane Lions now. The Bombers to add to their halftime score of 3-4-22. The first two goals of this second half going the way of the Lions. What are some of the numbers for James Tunstall, Jim? Yeah, he's had the 18 disposals, added that goal to it. He's also had the two tackles, taken four marks for the game. Um, he's also the leading inside 50 deliverer um, with six so far as well. So he's been really important in that transition game. We talked a lot about transition game. He's been a, a leader in that alongside Reveal. So back into the centre square. It's Darcy Fort up against Nick Bryan. This will be locked up and we'll have a secondary stoppage in the centre circles. Will Martin in the number 55 lurking at the bottom of both Ruck's feet. Dunkley paddled it to himself, reeled it in and then thumped it inside 50. Beautiful stuff. <laughs> Lewis Hayes outbodied, outmuscled and the mark's been taken. Jack Payne, I thought my eyes were deceiving me because he's known as a defender. And it took him a couple of times <laughs> to convince the umpire that he'd actually taken that mark, but he'd in fact taken it with a few different grabs. He's just giving away a fair bit of physical size on Lewis Hayes. Jack Payne directly in front of goal. Defender turned forward in this third term from directly in front. Makes no mistake, he's got his first... And the Brisbane Lions have now got their seventh. Darcy Gardner at senior level has proven his um, ability to switch between the back line and attack. And obviously Jack Payne has just done the same. So trying to bring in a little bit more of that flexibility in that list, especially being able to adapt on game day, I think is, is part of Brisbane's development from last year. Um, at both levels, um, while Nick Bryan spent a lot of time on the ground in the middle of um, the field as Payne was taking that kick, but he's up and ready to take this as well, so that's a positive sign. I don't know what happened to him. He got a knock somewhere. The trainers were out to him for a fair while there. 7-5-47 now, the Brisbane Lions. The Bombers stranded at 3-4-22. Three, three goals from the Lions already to start this second half as the ball's locked up again in the middle. A lot of numbers around the contest, almost bees to a honeypot. The kick came out the way of Sharp, who thumped it inside 50 again. Now Jackson Payne, Jack Payne rather, has come off the ground. I don't like that when they kick a goal and they come straight off. It's one of my ultimate bugbears in Australian rules football. Here's Logan Morris, a little one along the ground to uh, big man Smithy who's gone up and down the chimney with the kick off the ground. Went Lohman, almost soccer style. And the outside of the boot went through for a minor score. Yeah, nearly crossed that in. It was off the outside <laughs> of the boot. It was pretty neat. If that had gone through, um, you would have had another highlight to, to share, Joey. Well, maybe. I don't think we'll be sharing that one, though, just a, a minor <laughs> score as Lewis Hayes brings the footy back in. Yeah, I don't understand, Jim, in Australian rules football, why when you just kick a goal, the adrenaline's pumping. The blood's rushing, as Nate Caddy flew for that one, and they take you off the ground. No one's ever kicked a goal from the interchange bench, Jem. I don't know if you know that about Australian rules football. A little fun fact for you. It's never happened. Here's Nate Caddy. Again, a little bit rushed with the kick. In the end, it's been reeled in by Shadow Brain. It's going to be turned over. 
I'm not having this argument with you, Joey. We had one last year. Did we? Yes. Oh, well, just come with me on it this year then. Inside 50 they go, and the chiseling ball's a beauty. And the mark's been taken by our man, Lloydy. In your number, 19. It is the best number, I'm, I'm telling you now. Well, at the moment, he's playing like Jason Dunstall. <laughs> <laughs> on the verge of kicking his third. Of course, Jack Gunston wears number 19, does he not, at Hawthorne? At Hawthorne, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, I mean, he did at Brisbane for a year. He did. So, Lloyd, he's taken over Gunston. Yeah. I don't know if the Gunston history at Brisbane is one to write well, home about. I just but... know that Jack Gunston's a goal kicker. He wears number 19. That's and correct. Now, Luke Lloyd, he's playing that role, and he's looking for three. From right on the paint of 50, it's going right to the line off hands and through for a minus score. But, Jem, since the first bounce of this quarter, the Bombers have barely got it past the centre circles. What can they do to turn that around? Yeah, it has lived in that front half. They, the Lions have been winning at stoppage, which automatically gives you the chance to gain that territory. It was something that at AFL level the Bombers did incredibly well last week. Um, they, they scored 61 points from stoppage against Hawthorne and look, never looked like losing it at the contest. But today they have struggled a little bit around their reveal. Um, those sorts of players have been really strong around the footy. So it's just about getting that control in the game. And that comes from winning the ball at the source, really, doesn't it? No question about that. And right now it's been the playmakers of the Lions since the best part of early going of the second term that they got on top. Sharp's kick was partially smothered. Torrent managed to get it to Pryor. And now Morris. On the opposite flank to where Luke Lloyd just had the latest shot. A bit of push and shove off the ball with Roberts and Sharp. And Pryor, rather. And now Logan Morris is going to have a crack at kicking for his third goal of the afternoon. The Lions have had 38 inside 50s to Essendon 16. It's an ownership of the forward half. Morris from right on the 50. It's a wonderful strike of the ball. That's enough to get anyone excited. A goal from long range. Logan's got three in his first outing for the Lions, Gem. And they're trading blows, these two, Logan Morris and Luke Lloyd in that forward line. They do look like a handy pair in that front half, don't they? They sit in each flank themselves, so they kind of own that space and know um, not to you know, crowd their teammates' space. Mm -hmm. They're able to do it that way, and then they do have some really talented smalls that sit at their feet that, if they don't take the mark, can mop it up. So it's really stretching the Essendon defensive line so that they can't come off and support one another because they have to be spread across those both of those flanks. We... So right off the top of this call, Essendon's defensive line looked really strong and you said, you know, they give up momentum a little bit and they find it really hard to win it back. That's exactly what we've seen happen. Yeah, 8 7 to 3-4-22. It's out to 33 points. It was seven at half time. In the blink of a lo an eye, the Lions are almost taking this game right away from the Bombers and if they don't get one in a hurry, they're in danger of this one being over before three-quarter time. Here's Jackson Haitley. We'll send it inside 50 for the Dons. Just falls short of the contest. Managed through Kiralee to get a boot to it. Vicentini's going to watch it track the boundary. And also, Jim, just as Logan Morris was having that shot at goal, Jaden Davey came from the ground and got some attention on that left elbow. The physio's left him alone for the moment. Maybe just a little stinger. But, uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Yeah, you never want to cop a blow to your elbow, do you? Well, no. And there's nothing funny about the funny bone that's in the uh, arm there. Around the back of the contest is Jack Paris who snaps and goals. That might be the one that starts to turn momentum back the way of the red and black. He didn't need a lot of room there, did Jack Paris? Nice little crafty goal from a small forward. They're the sorts of goals that Essendon needs to execute because they're not getting those marks inside 50 that they really need. Nate Caddy's working incredibly hard. He's trying to come up the ground to be an option to actually allow them to exit defence, uh, but they're not getting the presence from their tolls inside 50 that they would really want. So executing those small forward options, turning, you know, they look like something from nothing, but they're, if, if it's a stoppage, 
you would have drilled the stoppage so many times in preseason. You know where you need to be standing. You know where the ball needs to be hit. And Paris executed that perfectly. But those are the goals that Essendon needs to kick if they're to get back into this. He cuts a run of four straight goals of the Lions. There's Jack Paris and the Bombers. So they're still within a touching distance. One's just thrown away. Tom Thomas picked it up. He shoveled the handball backwards towards Will Hoare. Haitley had to go up as if he was flying for a mark. Reveal gave away the free kick. And now the Bombers on the bounce take the advantage. They'll go inside 50. Here is Caddy presenting. It was kicked away from him. It might work out okay for the Dons. It's now with Caddy. A brilliant handball to Smart. Into goal. Two in a row. And in the blink of an eye, the Bombers fight back. And Oscar Smart has his first goal in Essendon Colours. Well played. Really well played. The kick going inside 50 did not work to Caddy's advantage at all, but he made it work. He was one on three. He had to come back up to the ball carrier because it wasn't coming in as long as he was hoping for. He was just able to equal it, get it out to a teammate, and then to have those runners coming through, which obviously ended up being smart on the outside, really important. And that running in waves thing, we love to see it, and it's just worked really well for SNN. And we said winning back momentum is important. I think Bombers may have started to do that. Yeah, 5 four, thirty-four, down to 8 7 55, Jaden Davey makes his way back on the ground. They've kicked the last two in quick succession. Vicentini will go up against Fort. We might have to recall that bounce. Just a little bit of skewed. Vicentini wearing Patrick Voss's old number. He's getting his first crack at the level. Thrown in the air to restart play. And kick out of there from McPherson. Was... Uh, Foley may have been taken without it. It's been a whistle. Holding the ball. So it's going to be Jack Manley to take this free kick. He'll go on the left foot to the top of the goal square. Some tall timber oh. down there. And Jack Payne back on the ground. Takes a terrific mark at the top of the square. Umpire coming up to a little conversation between Smart <laughs> and Tunstall, I think that is. Smart's being... A bit smart to him. Ooh, well yeah. a little chirpy <laughs> is Oscar. I mean, he is a small forward, so you'd expect nothing less as Jack Payne looking for goal number two. Oh, he's made the umpire work. I think he squeezed it home. And the response to the two goals from the Bombers comes from Jack Payne, who's now got two himself. 9-7-61 to 5-4-34. They re-established that 27-point lead. Oscar Smart still having a bit of chat, and it's Jackson Pryor, not Tunstall, sorry, that he's having a chat with. But the umpires have been coming over to their... Oh, they're, now they're getting into each other. Um, the umpires have been coming over to, them to the, remind them they don't want to give anything away, but they're not happy with each other, um, especially not Pryor. Well, so he's just had a goal kicked on him. That's going to be one to watch, which is going to be enthralling. But Payne, I love the way... We know that defenders love... Um, to be the best readers of the football because that's essentially, as a defender, how you um, earn your bread and butter. But his ability to do that in the forward line has been really dangerous and it's really thrown a different look in that forward line for the Lions. So the clearance goes the way of Brisbane to the broadcast wing and Manly was wrapped up. Another stoppage, broadcast side of the ground. Just in front of the interchange gates, Tunstall shoveled it along the ground. Luau met it, full chested, picked it up cleanly, got it to Toma. Roberts, kick partially smothered. It might work out okay, Paris, although the pocket was picked by Darcy Fort, and Paris went back in to win the day. Oh, Brilliant, strong oh, tackle. It no might good. be a touch dangerous, though. And yeah. Luau's going to earn himself a free kick, and the Bombers want to remonstrate with Joel Butterick on that occasion. That's no good at all. But Luau straight up, though. Toma, nice little shake and bake in the centre circles. That handball, not great. Jack Payne comes out to pick it up. And the Brisbane Lions will search forward again. Here's Tunstall. High handball. Put his teammate under trouble. Managed to get the numbers as Brucey Reville left the footy behind. Luau shoved him off it. Lewis Hayes tried to go along the ground. Manly thought he might have been taken high. Threw the head back. And the ball's locked up again. Joel Butterick just throws his body in. 
It's something we haven't seen as much of at AFL level. Do you think it's the attention on the dangerous tackle has started to drive it out of the game, Joey? Uh, I feel like you're probably onto something there. That and the fact that the, the MRO is straight onto it now. Yeah. It was at one point a fine. Now you're getting weeks. It did peak in the AFLW in Season 7, so 2022. And then it did drop off a little bit last year. So I think everyone's learning the skill a little bit more of how to tackle more safely. But that, yeah, that wasn't a good one from Buderick. And you can totally understand the the way they're protecting players' heads and concussions in this modern day and age. And as we spoke about earlier on today, the 21-day protocol. Yes, at this level, it's a 21-day protocol now, not 12 as it is at AFL and AFLW level. So... It usually means three weeks out of the game if you have concussion or concussion symptoms, which is a change uh, this year coming in. And it's every level below AFL and AFLW level. So that includes juniors as well as reserves, comps and things like that. And, of course, we've seen in recent times the unfortunate nature that so many players are being forced into retirement due to ongoing symptoms of concussion. So... Protection is of the highest order as the Brisbane Lions try to win back the footy from the Bombers here. O'Neill, Toma, they are under siege of the Dons, but seemingly they're finding ways out with the handball. Although they might have coughed it up here. A whistle on play to break all this fumbling up goes the way of the Lions. And James Madden will send it inside 50 again. The tall timbers down there, Forts in the front of the contest, roving it. Thump towards goal off the boot of McPherson. It's going all the way through for a minor score. In fact, it's going to be a free kick to Logan Morris. Your man. There was just a holding from Matt Foley. I think he might have been a touch panicked by how quick that ball went in. It also shows you just how dangerous Morris has been that they're that worried about him to give away a free like that. So he'll do the modern day football. Two steps around Logan Morris. And he adds another one to his account. That's four. That's four. Having a handy little debut is Logan. They've now got 10. 10, 7, 67 to 5, 4, 34. That goal was created not just by that free kick, by the, but by the pressure that Brisbane was able to apply higher up the field. It was one little fumble from Essendon in that passage of play. They looked like they were out. They looked like they were going to go end to end like they have done a couple of times. But the, the pressure from Brisbane higher up the field forced the one fumble and then they started to get into you know, quick little handballs to try and get free from themselves. So And... You know, one metre handballs to a teammate, very rarely is that going to do much for you because they're under as much pressure as, as you are. So that created that holding the ball free kick for Brisbane higher up the field, which then created the, the one for Morris there. So they've put that margin back out to beyond five goals after a little pushback from the Dons. They've kicked the last couple. Bryant wins it down. Haitley had two on him. One of those was Tunstall, but it, it bounced fortuitously. For the Bombers, Monty's kick, though, is going to be intercepted by Shadow Brain on centre-half back. Going short to the half-back flank for Tom Duday. And a little 20-metre ball further afield works for Kyle Dunkley to give it back to Duday. Kept running and thumps the Lions inside 50. Easy pickings for Big Schmitty, who just floated across the front, glided in and took the mark. He has gotten himself into some of those positions, hasn't he? But... Dude just shows how dangerous he can be coming out of that back half. Scary signs for Collingwood. If Tom Dude gets through today, he's probably playing next week, isn't he, for the Brisbane Lions? Surely he's playing. Surely. Their prized recruit of the off-season. And the other one that you're hoping will come back through the VFL is uh, old mate Ashcroft. Will Ashcroft. Well, he's, he's probably still a few weeks away, isn't he, from his yes. uh, return to playing Australian rules footy and hopefully... In the senior side, because he's an absolute superstar, Henry Smith is directly in front of goal, looking for number 11 for the team. Makes no mistake, the goal umpire barely moved. Just watched it go sailing over his hat. And Henry Smith has his first of the afternoon. And the Brisbane Lions move to 11-7-73. The Bombers are 5-4-34. Joey. Yes. Can I give you some updates of some other games that are happening right now? Yes, please. Let's go around the grounds in the uh, Rebel VFLW and the Smithies VFL. Where are we starting? Uh, 
Richmond has beaten Gold Coast by 23 points at People First Stadium. The reigning premiers have lost their very first game of their premiership defence. Southport leads Port Melbourne by 34 points at Fankhauser Reserve up in Queensland. And Werribee and Geelong are doing battle right now at GMHBA Stadium. Werribee is up by four points. There are no VFLW matches happening at the moment, but results of the day so far, Port Melbourne in the earlier game here today, won by 47 points over Essendon. Carlton, big win in round one over Geelong by 31 points. And North Melbourne has claimed a win over Western Bulldogs by 22 points out at Witten Oval. We've got a 5.05 game between Darabin and Williamstown happening later on today as well in the VFLW at La Trobe University. And we'll be talking about all that and more on State of Play this week. On a Tuesday morning, you can access that podcast as it's thrown back up top of the square for the Lions. They're going back to go forward. Tunstall from a standing start on the paint of 50. On the breeze. James Tunstall is having a great game. To put his name in lights and say to Fagan and Bet Hudson, I should be playing higher up. Brilliant finish. <laughs> Great goal. A Smithy snag. Yeah, he's still clearly the best player on the ground right now. He's had 20, that, that was his 21st disposal of the day. He's taken not, uh, four marks, had the two clearances, and now kicked the two goals. He's just everywhere for the Lions. And that's his second goal. They've now moved to 12. And again, we spoke ever so quickly about the Bombers trying to reel back some momentum. And now it's gone again in the blink of an eye. The Brisbane Lions have added eight goals in this quarter alone, Jeb. Four, two, that's two to the Bombers, and then four again. Momentum, almost impossible to stop. Two, four, then eight in each quarter. There you go. Thrown back up in the centre square. Bailey Scott stood underneath the ball. And he comes to the broadcast side and picks out Tom Toma. Time for thick music from Tom. Now, he went to play on, did Tom Toma. And as one of the Lions was running past following his opponent through, it might have even been Luke Lloyd. The umpire stopped and propped and said, go back over your mark. And that's what Tom Toma did. So out of side of the ground, he switched it. Lewis Hayes to Luau. But he did sunshine here at the hangar. Luau steps around Big Smithy. Gets on the right foot. Swings it into the pocket. Wiedemann presents. Two bites of the cherry. The mark not paid. The Lions have got the numbers out the back. That kick partially smothered off the boot of Dara Joyce. Brucey Reveal keeps it in and picked out Kyle Dunkley with the handball. He'll get it back from Henry Smith. The space opens up in front of Dunkley. To Lloyd, who found some separation on McKay. He'll keep it low. He went looking for Morris. It was just flicked away by McKay. Swings it back to Scott. Across the face of goal to Roberts. And Archie in the opposing back pocket takes the mark. That's not a great kick at all from Archie. And the ball has been turned over. And Reese Torrent now take the mark and go back and have the shot at goal. Joey, the inside 50 count is looking worse and worse every time I check it. It's 19 to 46. Oof. As Nate Caddy comes back on the ground and wonders, why isn't the ball getting down to me? Reese Torrent, another one that the Lions picked up in 2023, picked 64 out of Western Australia. Can he add his name to the score sheet? You bet he can. Nice and fluent from Reese Torrent. A wonderful left foot kicking action. Sees him have his first. And they push along to 13-7-85. The Bombers, 5 at 4, 34. 51 points the margin, Gem. It was only 7 at half time. It was 3 at quarter time. Encouraging for the Lions, if you're a Lions fan, is that all three of their recent draftees in the 2023 AFL draft have hit the scoreboard. Logan Morris has kicked the 4, as we've raved about. Luke Lloyd has kicked the 2. And now Reese Torrent has just kicked one. So... They're all dangerous, attacking-minded players who have been very involved in the play. It's exciting times for the Lions, isn't it? Like, I did speak to our colleague, as, as you said before, Fish, Michael Whiting, over the off-season about, is this window of Brisbane's closing, opening? Like, where is it at, given they've played in the AFL finals five years in a row and 
course, last year, their first grand final performance in this five years. And he feels like it's open for, well, the best part of a good two more, three more years. Mind you, the results of the first two weeks, <laughs> you've got to ask questions. But, I mean, teams are prone to losing games of football. It's one week into the season. Two weeks for... Well, for Brisbane, yes. Brisbane. Yes. But we must remember in 2017 when Sydney went 0-6 and six and still made finals. So anything yes. can happen. Well, the Lions were 0-2 in 2021 and made a prelim. So they've got past experience to draw upon. Flicked out the back door. Manly on the right foot to the top of the goal square. It might go on the breeze. It's fisted through in the end for a rush behind. So they move to 13-8, 86-5-4-34. Joey, if you're Blake Carousella mm -hmm. and you're struggling in the face of these Brisbane inside 50s, what changes are you making? Or what are you telling your side? That's a very good question. I don't think you want them to go into their, their shells, into the defensive mindset and just keep hold of the ball. I think you'd, you know, a lot of coaches in the modern game seem to be happy to say, I'd rather lose by 10 goals than lose by 20, just play some attacking football. On this list of VFL experience for the Bombers, they have 88 games of experience from their 35 listed VFL players. I mean, there's not a lot there. Yeah. So they're only going to get better by playing together, by spending time on the field together. And these opportunities to, to use whatever's left in this game, maybe a little bit of this third term and then obviously half an hour left in the final quarter, maybe just try a couple of things. Maybe throw a magnet around to something that you didn't see coming over the preseason and just see what you can find in this team of theirs. Are you doing anything in particular yourself? The thing that's really standing out to me is Brisbane's defensive setup doesn't allow for any of those quick kicks into space, which is what they were trying to do earlier that created that Jaden Davey goal. There's Jackson Price sitting on his own as a as a deep anchor. There's Shadow Brain sitting off the stoppage as a as a defensive kind of winger almost. And there's James Madden doing the same. So they've got, so Brisbane's got so much representation defensively that as soon as the ball comes their way, they turn it over and they slingshot. So maybe evening up some of those numbers so that you do have actual representation when you do have a quick kick going forward could be a way to go. Um, that's more of an attacking mindset as well. But Brisbane is really well organised, which makes it hard. So Tunstall thumps the footy to the top of the square after being awarded the free kick. Tom Tomer picked it up, shot the handball out. It ended up with Scott and straight away was thrown into the ground by McPherson. And the umpire was quick on the whistle to say, I'll have it back. So on the half forward flank for the Brisbane Lions, Brian won it down. There's been a whistle. And they can't quite believe it. The red and black army that are here. <laughs> Henry Smith will take the free kick. He'll set it up to the top of the square. It'll be one for the tall timber down there. It's the front of the contest. Brilliant from Loman. The pirouette from Morris was sensational. And he picks out Harry Sharp. Didn't go far enough. That's interesting. That's a wild call given some of the other <laughs> things that have been called marks today. That was just class from Morris there. Sublime. A little pirouette dance on a dollar. A little bit like Jesse Williams in the earlier match. Yeah. Did something very similar. So the clearance goes the way of the Bombers. It might come back, although Smart just ripped their head off prior. And we know the two of them have been going at it throughout this third term. And they've just carried themselves over the line. But this is exactly what I mean. As soon as the ball comes out this way... There's loose lines everywhere to mop it up and go and immediately switch back into attack mode. So Joyce tried to pick out his teammate, couldn't. Bailey Scott's got nothing ahead of him, so he just has to stop and prop and unfortunately give the footy away. Really good tackling from the Brisbane Lions and Liam Hude. I haven't called his name a lot, but when we have, he's done a couple of nice things. With the footy in hand, he'll set it up inside the Ford 50 arc. Mark not taken down there by Callan Lane. And Darcy Fort's also lurking around the place. So Smart is still trying to get into Jackson Pryor, doing a little bit of theatrics around him at the moment, which is funny to watch from up here. He's acting like he's, he's suggesting that Jackson Pryor flopped in the previous encounter. Well, when you're a small forward, you'll try anything to get under the skin of 
your opponent and the opposition. Here's Dara Joyce. And Nate Caddy. They both fly up. Mark not taken as the ball hits the ground. It's thumped back inside from where it came. Will Hoare just paddled it down to Sam Wiedemann, who may have been swung back here. Just to arrest some of the tide and the momentum. Ricky Monty just handled it to himself. He's got to go one out here on his own, does Rick, on the outer side of the ground. Joyce, Monty again, a third attempt. Did really well because he was outnumbered, was Monty. Paddled yeah. it in front of himself, kicked it off the ground, and then produced the smother to get it over the line. But that's the way Essendon has to play to get back into this. If they're not going to equal those numbers ahead of the ball... They have to stop the rebound that those spares from the Lions are getting. So incredible individual effort there, but you can't rely on really great individual efforts to get you back if that's the way you want to continue playing. It is three-quarter time here at the Hangar, and as we turn for home, the Brisbane Lions are in total control of this game. 13-8-86 to Essendon, 5-4-34. Logan Morris leads all comers with four on the field. So... Joey, that might be an indicator that he is being managed out of this one as they prepare for his AFL return potentially next week. As early as Thursday night, the Brisbane Lions are back in action. They take on Collingwood to open up an Easter weekend extravaganza of footy. In the centre square to start the final term. And Brian got over the top of Fort, but it's Brucey Reville thumping it to half forward. Lloyd will sit underneath the high ball, as will Jack Payne. Bounce back the way of Reville. He managed to break the Haightley tackle with relative ease in the direction of Morris, who was met by Hayes. Gray went off the ground with a paddle, and there was a whistle. So it's coming back the way of Campbell Gray, who might be struggling with a little bit of cramp there. I think his boot came off. He was oh, is that his what boot back right. <laughs> I thought the calf just seized up on him. So there is the boot. He couldn't quite get it on right, Jim, because it's gone flying <laughs> almost as far as the Sharon went. <laughs> For Campbell Gray. Now, did you catch, uh, was it last week, Grind Myers threw away the boot of Ryan, Rowan Marshall? He did. We don't want that to happen here, although the boot might be in play as it goes to the top of the square. And now, man, Callan Lane, another tall man. The tall timber takes the mark. I think last night there was someone that took a mark and needed a couple of seconds to be able to do his shoe back up before he took his kick. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> Got to lace those boots tightly, don't you, Joe? Yeah. Double knot. Do the old-fashioned, put the electric duct tape over the top so the, the laces don't come undone. <laughs> Here's Callum Lane from almost directly in front to start the final quarter. It held up in the breeze, but it works okay for him and for the Lions. They've got their 14th, and he's on the score sheet for the first time today. Eight individual goal kickers for the Lions as well. So they've shown just how many avenues to goal they've got in this team. Essendon only the four, two of which coming off Nate Caddy. So some work to do there. To be fair, they haven't really gotten it in forward for them to have an impact. Yes. Um, sorry, five. I forgot about Oscar Smart hit right at the bottom of my sheet. He's uh, he's had some other things to do today. Uh, some other things to do, has he? Get into Jackson Pryor. You reckon that was on his uh, list of things that yes. Blake Carousel wanted him to do? Yeah, frustrate Jackson Pryor. And kick a goal. So we're back into the centre square. It was a pretty good goal, to be fair. It was a good goal. Well <laughs> worth celebrating and getting into your opponent about. In a former life, I was a small forward doing the exact same thing. Here we go again in the middle. Brisbane have pushed this margin almost beyond 10 goals after only leading by one at half time. Haightley gets the clearance inside 50. Davey, who started the game in a blaze of glory. Lohman shoved Wiedemann aside. Dunkley to Brain. Shadow broke the tackle. He handballed it just to space. And it might come back as Caddy chases up the footy. Got it to Bailey Scott, who goes into the pocket. The kick, no good. Doesn't help Wiedemann at all. In the end, it goes out of bounds on the full gem. Joey, Kai Lohman hasn't really played. He hasn't played in the second half. He's got the hoodie on, he's had a shower, and he's got the strapping around his right knee. So it may not be as positive as we initially thought for Lohman there, which is unfortunate because this was meant to be his year to break through consistently into the AFL side. Yeah, they did try to get him back on, but just before half time, and maybe that was the test that they needed to say. Let's just get you off and put you on ice for now. We'll follow it up during the week. End-to-end -end stuff with Morris on the end of it. Brilliant ball movement from the Lions. And, Jem, I feel like as this game's gone on, these younger players are starting to feel obviously more part of this team. And they 
synergy, the energy that they've brought, the way they've moved the footy around. Again, we talked about this with Port Melbourne earlier this morning. The, the skill level, this early part of the season, they're on song early. Yeah, adapting to the conditions is yep. a big part of it, which is probably what caught Brisbane out a little bit in the first quarter. But that, that combination in attack has been really dangerous. So he's kicking into a slight breeze, which may just hold the Sharon up. So there's a pack in the goal square. And it's just faded across the face of goal as everyone just sort of paused for a moment, hushed and watched it <laughs> go across the face of goal. Four goals, two for Logan Morris in his first outing. So six shots at goal. A couple of brilliant marks too as a young small forward finding his way in the game. Absolutely. And just I've just been watching the Brisbane bench quite a lot and there's three players getting up ready to come back onto the field and one of them is not Tom Duday, so I'd suggest he's on ice. Here's your man, Oscar Smart, taking the ball from Jaden Davey. He'll run around, snap onto the right foot and work it back. Not enough, though. Not enough for a minor score. He was sort of running parallel to goal when he went to snap that one rather yeah. than running towards the goal. Now, Joey, if you're Jackson Pryor, mm -hmm. are you going to give back what no. he gave to you? No, no. There's no point. <laughs> no. No point when you're up by a fair margin, right? Yep. Yep, correct. You don't want to do anything stupid. No. No, you don't. Luke Lloyd now has the ball. Smart footballer. Bruce Reville. Started the game really well. Early on, when the momentum was against the Lions, he was probably the one gem that kept willing his own team forward. You know who he reminds me of? Speak on it. Kathy Spark. Okay. So Kathy Spark is obviously a two-time premiership player for um, Brisbane in the AFLW. She has a point of difference because she's got that power run breakaway from stoppage, which is exactly what Reville has been able to offer to this midfield. He, he, it's a point of difference to what everyone else is able to do. And it's been really damaging um, when he has had the ball in his hands. He doesn't have to be the leading possession winner because when he does get it, he can be really, really good, really dangerous with it. And he's used it really well today. Madden picks up the loose crumbs on the outer side of the ground. And this is Jake Lohman, the brother of Kai. Half forward flank. We'll thump this one. Inside 50, Payne and Lane. The two of them sit underneath it. Now, is that man in front? The umpire thought so. So Will Hawke. Defensive mark for him. Thumps it in the caddy direction. He's got two to beat. Nate just stood up with a little bit of spring in his feet. In between two lions and took the mark. Sent it inside 50 towards Wiedemann. Smarts at the front. Met straight away. And locked up. When the ball has been in caddy's vicinity, he has really made his presence known, hasn't he? He's done some nice things. A couple of really nice marks, a couple of nice goals. I reckon if you're to be overly critical, there's been a couple of moments where he's had the space and time and just rushed the kick ever so slightly. That snap in from the Bombers is there. And it's a wonderful finish in the end from Tom Tomer. Didn't need a lot of room, but he's on the board. And the Bombers now have their sixth. Yeah, there's, a re there's obviously a reason why Caddy was so highly rated going into the draft and everyone was so excited about him. He just has a presence about him, doesn't he? Especially when he's flying for the footy. Um, it's something that Essendon fans will be very, very excited about for the long term. He, he already looks physically ready at the level as well, doesn't he? Where, but that, that's a great goal from Toma to come through, make something of nothing, which is a cliche, but it's true. It, every time the ball's gone in there... Generally, it's been a bit of a scrap and then it's come back out. He was actually able to make it count for the Bombers. Yeah, he and Ricky Monty, the two boys out of Golden Square, have joined the Essendon list over summer and they've done a couple of nice things today. Brucey Reville thumps it inside 50, it's fisted away. Might have to go back in after it. Roberts was clean. Kiralee just shoveled it forward. Sharp and then Payne inside 50. Gray's going to watch a track towards the boundary line and see it over. Against Lukey Lloyd. Something else worth mentioning. I, I talked about Essendon needing to equal numbers ahead of the ball last quarter because that the ball, every time they kicked forward, it was just going straight to a line and coming back over their heads. They have equaled the numbers. The only loose number, really, 
for the Lions is Darcy Fort, their ruck. Uh, but everyone else is a, in a one-on-one, um, which gives them more of an opportunity when the ball does come into their attacking half. Roberts gets the clearance going for the Dons. Haitley's got some space to reel the footy in. Straight away, he puts it onto his boot, sends it to half forward. It's fisted away there from Liam Hude and goes over the line. But that's a win. If you're, if you're the Bombers, that's a win. You're able to reset and go again from here. Whereas last quarter, that ball was going there. It was immediately marked by a line because there just wasn't representation from the Bombers. So uh, positive signs. Thrown back in. Half forward flank area for the Bombers. Haitley, who's cracked in all day and had a go. Reveal. Miss Dunkley on the handball and we'll have a secondary throw in in the same spot. We've been in total control since half time, the Brisbane Lions. They're thrown back in. Brian we'll tried to go out of the air, soccer style. In the end just paddled it. Roberts, left football into the pocket. Wiedemann didn't take the mark. It's at the bottom of his boot laces. They've managed to find a way through there, the Dons. It was across the face of goal. It came off the boot of Jedwib and threw for a minor score. But at least they're possessing the ball a bit more, generating those shots. They've generated, what, three or four shots on goal this quarter alone, whereas the Lions have definitely been less prolific in that attacking line. But it shouldn't take a quarter-time break to be able to stop momentum like that. So Sharp will send it down the line. The one thing I'll say to that, Jeremy, is there's just not a lot of experience in this team. No, I agree, I agree. Even their their leaders of this team, in terms of um, Jackson Haightley and Xavier O'Neill, captain, vice captain, they don't have a lot of AFL experience next to their name, and it's their first year with with this footy club too. So it's taking them maybe a little bit longer, these Bombers, to gel with one another. But a positive sign is that they can make those changes yep. in-game and improve. Yep. Um, you don't want to have to... Oh, great, great smother. That was from you, ba- Bailey Scott, that smother. You don't want to have to take it, you know, into, you know, the, the whole week that you weren't able to make change and, and just try to improve the next week. At least here from quarter to quarter, they've been able to fix those things. McPherson shoveled the handball, was taken high. So he'll get a free kick. We talked about... The fact that he lives with his brother Darcy earlier on, of course, with the Gold Coast Suns. Gold Coast Suns. He was the sub last week, Darcy McPherson. Doesn't talk about game plans with his brother because uh, Chris Fagan doesn't allow it. <laughs> We've had a few controversial brothers chatting in the <laughs> AFL before. Yes. Never again. They're not allowed to speak to one another between March and September. All brothers of all families. Here's McPherson. A little stuttering approach. Gets a bit of momentum up in the uh, Sharon. Right to the goal line. It's fisted away. It stays in and Luau can reel this in. He's got a bit of grass in front of him. Just checks the kick ever so slightly to Jared Eckersley. And he cuts back inboard to Jack Paris. A nice goal in the third term. And Lewis Hayes in his defensive 50 arc. May opt to send this one down the line. That's what he does. Gives it plenty of sky. Let the breeze do the work on it. O'Neill went through his fingertips. Here's Nate Caddy. Reeled it in. Back to Paris. The speedster. Shot it off to Haightley. Open forward 50 arc. Lohman tracks it back. It bounces on its point. Turns around and smart bangs it. Through for a point. And the <laughs> frustration on his face is clear for all to see. He couldn't believe it. You just have to kick that. Especially if you've been lippy. When you do get an opportunity in front of goal, you've got to kick it, right? Well, he wanted to kick it to Tullamarine Airport. He hit it that hard. Kicked the cover off it. Wanted to break through the net behind the goals. He did pretty well in his attempt. Jackson Pryor now has got the balls. It's brought back in. Morris. Didn't get near that one. Foley. Back to McKay. Nice, well-weighted ball. And the mark's been taken here by Michael Kiraly. A lot of movement ahead of Kiralee, but he'll set it up to the top of the square and, well, reading that really well. In the end was Archie Roberts. Archie Roberts had a very good final quarter. He's up to 23 disposals 
He's had the three clearances, but he's just really worked himself into the game as it's worn on, which is a really nice sign for a, a young guy who's just joined the club in the recent draft. He plays junior footy and somewhat senior footy with the Hampton Rovers in the Amos. Out at uh, Boss James Reserve, and now he's kicking goals at the hangar. Finishing off his debut game with a little bit of style. A goal for Archie Roberts. That's the Bombers' seventh of the afternoon. 7 6 48 they are now. The Brisbane Lions are 13 8 86. So the margin back to under 40 points, Jim. Now, Joey, there's some other games happening as we speak. Oh, if you don't want to know the score, look away now. It's your favourite line. We've got to get Diesel's tip off the tongue to start playing in the background. That's what it used to be in the late 90s. And they go around the grounds with the score. The music come up. Anyway, keep going. I'm not going to sing it for you. What's going on in the Smithies VFL, Jim? <laughs> That's what I was waiting for. Uh, Southport is leading Port Melbourne by 37 points at Fankhauser Reserve up in Queensland. Geelong is losing to Werribee by 12 points at GMHBA Stadium, the last year's grand finalists. Playing well even without Sean Manor there. And North Melbourne is up by 15 against the Northern Bull Ants at Arden Street as their senior counterparts are playing Fremantle at Marvel Stadium. Well, now, there might have been an injury here to Henry Smith. He's just grabbed for the shoulder. He's going to stand up and take the kick. So maybe the pain dissipates when he knows <laughs> he's got a possession coming for him. So just keep an eye if he goes back to that shoulder. Yeah, he doesn't look good at all. And Jimmy Tunstall, who's had a great day, chisels it into Dunkley. Maybe just a stinger on Smithy. He's sort of pushing the trainer away and deciding to stay on. Off to Tunstall from right on the pane of 50. It holds up in the breeze and it's fisted away. Tom Tomo went looking for the safety of the behind line. The ball stays in. The umpire says play on. A little oh. left foot ball is a beauty. Calm from Reese Torrent. Didn't panic. And now Ewan McPherson. There's a straightforward shot. 12 metres out in front of goal. Calm is the word because no one knew really where the ball was at that point, if it had gone over the line, if they should keep playing it. The torrent just took his time, squared it up beautifully. Did really well. Now McPherson, who had a shot only a few minutes ago, this time much more simpler. Angle and distance. And he's got it. He has his first. They've got 14, 15 now, the Brisbane Lions. And the Bombers are 7, 6, 48 to 15, 8, 98. We're back to 50 points. Joey, who's impressed for you today? James Tunstall. It's an easy one to say. Well, you didn't, you didn't specify what the criteria was. <laughs> I've been impressed with Luke Lloyd and Logan Morris. And I feel like each of the tools of the Brisbane Lions, we're talking about Darcy Fort. Callum Lane and Henry Smith have had real impacts and, and really stretched the Essendon defence. Um, if you want a name from the Bombers, I think Jackson Haitley's held his own yep. throughout the midfield. And maybe Nick Bryan throughout the ruck. Would be yeah. a couple of names that um, can hang their hats on their performance today as Tunstall still gets it out of the middle again. They're bursting through the centre square. That was Shadow Brain. Ball. You go far enough. Paris to the outer side of the ground. Pryor in a one-on-one. -on -one, pushed his opponent aside. May have got a high tackle. He has. I think the aggression of Brisbane's defence has really stood out to me. Mm -hmm. um, Pryor obviously coming so high up the field to impact that. Obviously gave away the free kick, but really wants to create those front half turnovers, which we know is so, so dangerous in, in footy. Just the, the chemistry of that back line. I know that's a very experienced back line. Here's Tom Tomer. Kicking a wonderful goal on the left foot, Jim. He followed that ball down. He was part of it on the halfback flank. Will Hoare cuts through the centre square. And Tom Tomer, the boy from Golden Square, has got his second, both in this quarter. Yeah, we've had a few of those bombers that have... Just stepped it up in the last quarter. They're trying to make something of a not-so-great situation. So that's a big positive for the Bombers. We mentioned Archie Roberts before, um, your man Tom Tomer. Um, yeah, there have been a few of them that have 
found a new gear, even under the pressure. But it would have been nice if they'd found a little bit earlier, wouldn't you say? It would have helped them. It certainly would have helped them earlier on in the game. Although their first half, I reckon there's a bit there that Blake Carousella can take away and work with. Certainly the first 15 minutes of the game, and this was something that I noticed watching the Bombers last year, was their first halves were, they were in the game. They were thereabouts. But then there'd be these concentration lapses, momentum swings, or even just general fatigue. And when you know, I guess at this level, as the, we get to the back half of the season, you can't make a wild card spot. You can't make the finals. That you're just almost putting the cue in the rack and you're playing minutes for the AFL players to potentially get up into the AFL side rather than worrying about sort of what's happening on the scoreboard at this level, which I noticed last year they drop away in games, particularly in the back half of the season. Their last game of the year was a win against Coburg. I think prior to that, they might have won one game out of six or seven leading into that final game. And it's been sort of a, a theme with the Bombers over the last couple of years watching them in the VFL. Uh, they had a couple of really good wins in 2022, but again, they had to fight for those wins. A lot doesn't come easy to the Essendon VFL team. Am I right in saying they beat Gold Coast last year by a point? Uh, the year before. The year before, right at the end of the season. And then lost to, in fact, and Werribee at the same point. Again, they knock Werribee out of the finals at the end of 2022. A couple of incredible wins. They had that one-point win to Coburg in the same year where it was dribbling along the line as the siren went and no one stopped it on the line. <laughs> but again, they've had to grind out those wins. They yeah. haven't... They haven't had comfortable 30, 40 point wins across the last two years, which is taxing as they have another flying shot at goal here. That one's missing. And a minus score off the boot of uh, Jakey Jedwab, who's kicked a couple of behinds now this afternoon. Is that another indicator of the health of their senior list? Obviously, Jordan Ridley not there. Mason Redman is suspended. So they have to bring um, Laverde up from the VFL. So there's the seniors are having to pull pl players from the VFL, whereas Brisbane, you know, they're, they're a pretty healthy list. You know, a Darcy Ford, a Jack Payne is playing in the VFL. Most other sides, they'd be in the senior side, right? I agree with that. I agree with you on that in terms of the way that the Brisbane Lions have structured up and an incredible strength and conditioning program that, I shouldn't say, doesn't allow for injuries because every club battles with injuries, but... An incredible amount of health on the Brisbane Lions list. That I think what the only they went into the grand final last year with Will Ashcroft being sort of the only one on their injury list. Whereas this year already we unfortunately have seen um, Kitty Coleman out with an injury. We're nursing Tom Duday back through this way. But you took, look at players like Lincoln McCarthy who was injury prone in his first stint at the AFL with Geelong. He goes to Brisbane hasn't had a problem. Yeah. See, Joe Danaher is exactly the same. There's some longevity playing for the Brisbane Lions. The Bombers have been injury riddled over the last few seasons at AFL level. And then obviously, as you just said, to reiterate, they're getting players pulled out of here. Maybe they're not ready to go up to that standard. Maybe they are. But it's happened far too often for us over the last couple of years. And lots of soft tissue, isn't it? Obviously, Jordan Ridley is the one that every Bombers fan is frustrated every time he gets a soft tissue because he's so important to the team. But... It's a it's a club wide thing that probably they'll be looking at, right? Yes, yes, it has to be a club wide thing. Surely you're looking at the whole program over the off season. What are we doing? Are we, you know, training too hard? Are we doing too much sprint work? Do we need to tailor the way we head into our pre seasons? As Eckersley from directly in front shoots into goal, and he's got his first as a bomber. So adding a little bit of. Respectability to the scoreboard to finish this game. They've now kicked 9, 9-7, nine, 61. Brisbane are 15-8, 98. It's 37 points to the margin. It's a little birthday gift for him who turned 20 yesterday, as we mentioned. But, yeah, Brisbane still kind of, even though they've let through a few in this quarter and, you know, they've, they've two down on the bench, obviously resting. Dude, getting him ready for his senior Brisbane debut next week hopefully um, and Kai Lohman who has sustained that knee injury but they still look dangerous when they get the ball, they still want to go quickly they still want to control it and really uh, put, create some discomfort in that defensive line for Essendon So Fort won it down O'Neill in the end slung 360 by Tunstall 
And he's going to be rewarded, is Jimmy, for a really good tackle on the captain of the Bombers. I dare say when we get to, uh, listen, trophy night at the end of September, Jim, and we go back on this game, this man's going to have three votes next to his name to open the season. Surely. But we did see Jess Bates mm. in the Lambert Pierce medal not necessarily get votes when we thought she should get them. Famously, Jasmine Garner in the uh, AFLW. Famously. Does anyone know who Jasmine Garner is in the AFLW with the way that she doesn't rack them up? It's wild. Incredible stuff. <laughs> the clearing kick out to the wing. It's Wiedemann and Payne. Payne back into defence. In he just one seems one. to have lived at that end of the ground, hasn't he? And he's so sure about himself too, pushing Sam aside, getting the handball off to Brain. And the Brisbane Lions work this out comfortably to regain possession of the football without much trouble. Although that kick, no good. And Solomon McKay. Takes the mark. And Jake Lohman was not happy. He's still having words with his teammate for that kick note going in his direction. Expecting excellence right to the last minute of the game. Backtracks to Gray. Who now picks out Matty Foley. Into the centre circles. Jackson Haitley can run straight up the corridor. Send it inside 50. And the kick's been turned over. The mark's been taken by Dara Joyce. James Tunsil up to 29 disposals for the game. Impressive outing. A couple of goals as well. Up the line on the outer side of the ground. McKay, another intercept mark. He's also had 10 inside 50s, Joey. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. Aggressive attack, I would say. He's just waiting for that opportunity, isn't he, in the Brisbane midfield to get his crack. It's a hard one to break into. Oh, very tough. Very tough. As Payne takes the mark. Taking a few marks in his defensive 50 or his attacking 50. Now we've given away a 50. A lot of 50s. In the AFL, North Melbourne looked bright and started well and were leading, but now are down against Freo by 16 points at Marvel Stadium towards the end of the third quarter. So Freo's gotten on their bikes. Making something happen. Remember, they made their move against the Lions late last week or maybe during that second term. And Even with a bunch of injuries. Yeah, it didn't really look back from there. Out of sight of the ground is where this footy's camped. Moves to half forward now with a pack of players. Maybe looking in the sun is Nick Bryant. He's a bit slow to get to his feet. I'll stump it back to half forward. Great intercept mark. Being taken by Jackson Pryor. He shoots the short ball to Shadow Brain. To Brucey Reville. Another one who might be at the top of the list when it comes to Gemma Bastiani's best players in this contest anyway. He started really well. Kick, though. Missed his target. Madden is taken over the line by Paris. The Lions do love an Irish player, don't they? Got a few. Dara Joyce in defence, obviously, and Madden. Connor McKenna. Connor McKenna has just been injured, but he's really dangerous when he's up and about. And then they've got Chen Dunn mm -hmm. and Orla O'Dwyer in the AFLW. One of your favourites is Orla. Chen Dunn is one of my favourites. Aren't they all your favourites? Yeah, correct. Lohman pushed off it by McKay. And that is the siren to end the first game of the Smithies of VFL season for both Brisbane and Essendon. And it is a comfortable win to the Brisbane Lions, 15-8, 98. To the Bombers, 9-7-61. A 37-point win with Logan Morris leading all comers with four goals. Two goals to Lukey Lloyd, James Tunstall and Jack Payne. Singles the rest, while Nate Caddy and Tom Thomas kicked two goals each. Jaden Davey, Archie Roberts, Jack Paris and Jared Eckersley. As